Welcome back to Longway Shooters of Utah. We're here at SHOT Show 2019, and we've stopped by the Annealing Made Perfect booth. We've got Matt, uh, one of the uh, principals here in the company, and we're going to go through and talk a little bit about annealing. We're going to answer your questions. Uh, why do we anneal? When should we anneal? Go through some best practices. And then we're going to talk about their m machine, the Annealing Made Perfect, which is really the, the Ferrari of annealing. Uh, so we'll talk about that. But Matt, first of all, tell us a little about, I mean, what are we talking about here with Annealing Made Perfect? Well, just like the banner says, we're the world's first and only smart annealer. We don't have any flames, there's no guesswork, and you just get perfect annealing every time. We are an induction-based unit, so no flames, no propane, no fumes, and uh, you can run it inside uh, of the normal power supply, and basically it's the most consistent anneal you can possibly get. So uh, looking forward to showing you more. Very good, awesome. So like I said before, we're gonna cover your questions. Why should I anneal? Uh, you know, what is annealing? Uh, how often should I anneal and so on. But first of all, we want to get in and check out this product because it, it's, it's so far advanced beyond anything else out there that we just got to see it to really show you what it is and then we'll cover those questions. So let's dive in and look at this demo. All right, so we've got Matt here. He's going to walk us through a quick demo of the uh, annealing made perfect. Go ahead, Matt. All right, so basically how it works is you've got your Aztec mode already built in to the Mark II. So you want to select that and it gives you a couple of options here. One of them being analyzed and run. So the first thing you want to do is uh, we've got a few 2 to 3 cases here and uh, we're going to analyze one of these to find out the correct setting to use and then we're going to anneal one. So first of all you get your shell holder, put it into the supplied grip and put a case into the, uh, well, first of all actually you, you get your pilot. So these pilots are specific to the caliber. So for example this uh, pilot here number 3 will do Two to threes, triple twos, that kind of thing. Uh, pilot number 11, for example, does your 308s, your 243s, and uh, the 308 family. So you want to put that into the machine first, get your case into the machine. You go online and you find the Aztec code for that case. So in this case, pilot number three, and uh, for two to three, it's suffix A. So once you've got that code, you go to analyze and it tells you to select your pilot. So just like we talked about uh, going online, you go um, 003. So that's your pilot that you've got in. And for the 223, it's A. So once you've got that entered, you can then analyze that case. What it's doing now is it's heating it up to the point where it's just going to melt. So you can see there, it's actually melted that case. The machine's detected the exact second that that started to melt and generated our code. You want to discard that case. So with every time you run through it, you're going to use up one brass. No, exactly. it's actually, you only need to do that once. That's what I mean. So yeah. you're may sacrificing one brass to get the setting for... Yeah, once you've got that setting, the next time you want to anneal, you can just use that setting. Gotcha. So you write down that code, it's giving us 0125. We will go use. Now we take a fresh case here. So that's uh, that hasn't been annealed, it's right out of the bag. And we can put that into the machine and run it. That's already done. And you can see now that is perfectly annealed. No guesswork, no flames, and uh, no temple lack or anything like that. It's the machine's smart. It can determine exactly the setting to use based off the algorithm that we put in there. So that's the Aztec mode. All you need to do is go online. We've got a whole settings page that tells you exactly what code to use for the caliber. So that, <clears throat> so yeah. Once you've got your code and you want to use it the next time, you can use the run function. So we're going over here to run, and it tells you to enter a code. So the code that you've written down, you just enter it in here. So, uh, you know, for example, it was zero, one, two, I think it was four from memory. And then you can go ahead and run that again. Okay. And the Mark II also has included the original standard mode. So there's your app mate. So if you have the app mate, you can uh, control that from here. And you've got the standard mode. So those of you who have the original Mark I machine will recognize this. Uh, it's, it's the same standard program suite that came with the first model. And that's uh, you know all online. Uh, so yeah, you can select the old programs that you used to use. So one of the main differences between the Mark II and the Mark I is we can anneal everything and up to 50 cal. 
So just to demo that, here's your 50 caliber pilot. We've got a 50 caliber case here. We're going to go into the Aztec mode. And we're going to analyze this 50 cal and then anneal one. So we select analyze. I know the pilot for the pilot code for this is 501A. So we go 5, 0, 1, A. So the Aztec settings page will tell you what to enter for that. Take our 50 caliber pilot, and uh, there's a special supplied grip for that which just screws on. So take the 50 caliber case into the annealer and analyze it. So this is a very large case, it's going to take a long time for that to actually heat up to the point where it detects the melt. And can you feel any temperature at all on the outside of the machine? I mean, it's it's as cold as can be. Uh, pretty much, uh, when you start running it, it'll warm up a little bit, but the fans kick in uh, pretty quickly. Yeah, so, there's, a, there's a fan coming right up the side. So that's there. given us our code for the 50 caliber. If I take that out, you can now see it's just a tick of that melt point. Wow. And we want to put that into the tray. That'll be very hot. Now we can take the 50 caliber case. We can use that code. And that these have been ultrasonic cleaned, so they won't actually show as much of the annealing mark as the 2D3s, but we'll put that in. We can run it. Again, bigger case, it takes longer to anneal. Roughly eight seconds, five to eight seconds. That's done. And that's annealed. You can just barely see where the coloration's come down to below the shoulder there. But like I said, ultrasonic cleaning will get rid of the oxidization, which causes that annealing mark. I think the oxidization is the cool part. It looks sexy. It's like brand new sweet grass. So here's a 243 Winchester annealed versus not annealed. You can just see the difference there. Looks like it just came right out of the box from Lapua. So just to show you another way, so we can take that one out. Uh, we can put in pilot number 11. And uh, go into analyze again. Um, just edit this bit. <laughs> just grab my pilot, uh, my case, sorry. 243 case. I tell it pilot number 11, so uh, 1, 1. And for 243, it's actually C. So we come over here and select C. So, you know, pilot number 11 would be correct for uh, 308, but for 243, it, it tells you on the ASTIC settings page to use C. So we can analyze that case now. Again, it's given us our code. There's the analyzed case. It's just started to melt. We take our fresh 243 case into the annealer, go use, start, that's already done, and there's your anneal 243 case. So in the space of about five minutes, we've actually analyzed a 50 cal, a 223, and a 243, and generated the perfect setting for all of those cases in the space of five minutes. Wow. So no other machine can do that. So we could have written down those codes that we generated just now, and we could have annealed a whole batch of 50 cal, a whole batch of 223, and a whole batch of 243, and right out of the box that lets you do that. That's perfect. So I had a couple of questions. So the only downside that I see is obviously you've got to sacrifice one brass. Right. So my question is, you know, if I box, if I buy a box of 100, 653 for the poor brass, I'm going to lose one, but I'm set for the other 99. Now, yes. am I also set for every box of the Brass six five three four that I ever buy, or is it, it got to be reanalyzed for every lot? Or every we recommend um, we recommend if you buy a new box, if it's the same batch, no. So your lot number, sorry. So if you get a, a box of six five three four Lapua brass, as long as it's the same lot number, you're set. But we have noticed that most manufacturers have subtle differences between lot numbers. So we recommend you uh, analyze a new case. Uh, if you get a different lot number. Okay. And certainly if you change brand. Gotcha. But once you've got your batch of uh, Lapua or Nosno or any uh, brass you want to anneal, um, once you've analyzed it, you can use that code for that batch of brass continuously.
Gotcha. So ideally, you'd like to buy a whole lot of the same lot of brass. Correct. And then you're never going to have to make a change in the setting. But ideally, if you are changing lots, you'd want to reanalyze, sacrifice a brass, right? But I assume it's probably pretty negligible. I mean, if you're, unless you're a bench rest guy or you're really going for the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate precision, you could probably get away with just analyzing all the poor the same and all the same of the same caliber? Well, if you go onto our standard settings page, you'll actually see that we've done a lot of tests on different batches of the same brand, and you'll see the differences in program settings. So some of the, some manufacturers have quite a wide spread hmm. between lot numbers. So we would reckon some manufacturers are okay, but you might want to check um, by going onto the standard page to see the differences for yourself. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Well, that's an absolutely incredible machine. I'm excited to uh, get my hands on one and use it myself. There are a few um, changes uh, cosmetically which we've done over the Mark One. You might notice the boss here actually has some uh, screws holding it down, and that actually allows you to replace this part. So you might have noticed before when I tried to put it in uh, this pilot, uh, this is actually um, added up nickel plated, so it's actually quite hard. But if you um, cross thread this at all, that's replaceable now. And if you look down there, you'll also see a ceramic insert. And that's just there to prevent any damage from, you know, dropping a hot case down there. Gotcha. So we've sort of thought about the machine, how we can make it better, uh, not just giving it more capability, but just making it a bit more uh, user friendly as well. Robust. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's go into some kind of Q&A here for a second. So I know a lot of guys watching this video are like, wow, cool machine. Now I understand why my brass comes out of the box with that little coloration at the top. So what is annealing? Why do we anneal? How often should I anneal? So annealing basically controls the neck tension. So if you reload uh, a case up to 10 times, 20 times, this neck shoulder region is going to get progressively harder and harder. It's like bending a paperclip back and forth. Eventually it's going to break. But not only will it possibly break or fail, it'll grip the bullet tighter and tighter. And that affects your pressure and therefore your velocity. But not only does it make it faster, it makes it more inconsistent between shots. So you can get guys with, uh, you might start off with a very accurate load and then notice progressively that that load gets more and more, that the, the velocity spreads will increase. Annealing makes the neck tension far more consistent every reload, but not only consistent, it keeps it at the same between reloads. What we recommend you do, when you get a new batch of brass, we recommend you do all of your brass, prep your neck turn, do it then, trim it, do it then, uh, load it up and shoot it, get it to that base level, that datum point to start from, and then start annealing every reload from that point. And it's very important that you anneal before you size. That gives you that nice size, that nice bullet seat, and uh, yeah. Okay, very good. Annealing also obviously extends your brass life as well. And that's really a good you know, point to make about this machine versus a, a flame-based machine because you're just never going to get that consistency unless you're doing it with uh, you know, this, kind of, a, this we, kind of... We actually have customers who use our machine who get their extreme spreads in their velocity below 10. They're in the single digits. So wow. when, you're, when you're shooting 1,000 yards, 2,000 yards, so basically ELR shooting, that's necessary to actually win. So 10 feet per second difference at 1,000 yards is quite a lot of vertical spread at that range. So if you can get your velocity spreads down below 10, that's pretty much the gold standard. Absolutely. And I know a lot of my followers ask me all the time about what guys to use and so on. And a lot of guys don't even use uh, you know, guys that have a neck pushing where they can control neck tension. And it's absolutely critical if you really want to get those SDs down uh, to, to do that. And then in addition to that, you have to anneal, otherwise you're, you're really you know, negating the, the benefits of, of even having that neck tension uh, ability. And just to, um, just to clarify, Good annealing and obviously good reloading starts with good brass. If you're using range pickups and expecting to get perfect annealing and perfect uh, neck tension as a result of that, you're really starting, uh, you're setting yourself up to fail. Um, this machine will get out, will set you up with a consistent heat source uh, for uh, the batch of brass, in the case that you analyze. So if you've got, say, a mixed bag of brass that has different brands, you are going to get different results because it's set up for whatever you analyze. So 
the recommendation that we set out to do is uh, for you guys is get good grass, good manufacturers, and you'll get good annealing. It starts with good grass. And on that topic, you know, maybe give me two or three or five of the best options out there that you've found. Peterson, best... Norma, Lapua. Those are the top three. Of the ones that we've tested, they are the most consistent. And which are the ones that we should avoid? I would rather not say. <laughs> I think we could probably guess. Okay, cool. Uh, what are some of the other common questions that you get from people? Like on your website, frequently asked questions uh, that maybe we haven't covered thus far. Well, how much does it cost is one. That's a good one. Um, you want to go online to the distributors page of our website, and you'll see all of the people who we, uh, sh we ship to all over the world. Um, in the US, this retails for 1400 roughly, but below that. And your pilots are uh, uh, $20 each, 20 bucks depending a pilot. on the ones you want to get. And you can get this through Brownells, which I'm a, a huge fan of. I'll yep. put a link in the description here for them. Uh, I love working with Brownells because they have an unconditional satisfaction guarantee policy. Uh, if, if for whatever reason something goes wrong or you don't like it or whatever, you can return it and they're going to honor that. So I'll put a link in the description for that. Awesome. So is there anything new uh, that we can expect in the future? Any other new uh, developments or enhancements that you guys are, are working on? Well, we're always thinking, but at the moment we believe this is the pinnacle of the kneeling for the, for the home reloader. Mm -hmm. I just want to also clarify, this now has a three-year warranty. The original Mark I machine came out with a one. This has a three-year warranty. Wow. So we continue to support um, well after purchase. Also, just to clarify, the Mark I version of this, we still support the software updates. So you can get exactly the same software on the Mark I as this one has. So you go to their website and, and pay for it and then download it or it's emailed yeah. to you? The only difference is, obviously, this is capable of 50 cal annealing and obviously the Mark 1 is it, so. Gotcha. What, it'll go up to what, 338 or 375? Yeah. The other thing we've uh, built in with that, we notice a lot of guys like using this sitting in front of their TV in their living room. So we've actually made the fans run relatively slow when you start uh, using it, just to keep the volume down. And only when you get into the, uh, you know, when you get into the high programs, it'll actually kick into full power. Okay. So we've sort of thought about that. Okay, and then we also have the amp mate, which we're going to back up here and show you, which is essentially an auto load uh, for the, the amp, right? So it's going to auto load those cases from a hopper and uh, you know, speed this process up for those guys that are extra lazy like me. I wouldn't say the amp mate speeds up the process, it just makes it hands free. Most of our guys who uh, use it by hand, you can do 100 cases in under 10 minutes. The okay. AppMate is uh, actually slower, but it gives you the freedom to go and do something else. Gotcha. And unlike a machine that uses a flame, you're not worried about burning your house down with this machine. No, it's purely induction, plug it into the wall, and away you go. And maybe you could take a second and explain briefly what induction is. So induction is using a magnetic field that oscillates back and forth very fast, high frequency, to induce what's called eddy currents into the into the metal that's being heated. So it won't actually work. If you put your finger in there and press the start button, it won't heat up unless you've got a metal rod or a ring on or something like that. Uh -huh. So it's very, very safe. Uh, it's like your induction pop up stove. If you have that on high power, put your hand on it, it won't you won't feel anything unless you put the metal pan onto it. So it's magnetic based heating. Okay. So there's no element as such in there that gets hot. So uh, it only gets warm because of the radiant heat off the brass being heated up and there are a few obviously the induction itself gets a little bit warm with use but you can put your hand on there while you're annealing a 50 cal for example and it'll be cold until you get it warmed up but the brass that comes out is going to be hot so oh be yeah so you want to be careful when you take it out that's why we recommend you know you want to hold it like that don't touch that and just wipe it against the tray like that and yeah and inevitably someone's going to ask the question, so uh, do you quench the brass after? In other words, do you dump it in water after? For so, some reason people think you need to do that. So uh, it's not really, so quenching is, uh, it doesn't work with brass. It doesn't change the metallurgy any, at any point. Uh, all it does is cool it down. Uh, we don't recommend um, quenching in water purely because now you're going to dry the brass yeah. uh, if you want to continue reloading. So it'll just let it air cool in a tray. Um, 
just come back in a few minutes. They'll all be, you know, dry and ready to reload. And do you recommend that they let it cool down to cool enough where they can touch it before they go and, and let it size for, it? Yeah, let it sit for 10 minutes. If you're doing a few hundred, you'll notice that the, the pile from all, uh, you know, continue to stay warm for a while. Just let it cool down to room temperature. Also, a lot of guys uh, like to uh, clean with stainless steel media before um, they are near, like immediately after shooting. We recommend, very strongly recommend, make sure there are there are no stainless steel pins in the brass before you anneal because um, stainless steel being steel will heat up in the machine uh, if you turn it on. So that's okay. a big no-no if you're using stainless steel media. So make check sure the next. it's empty. And actually, my friend owns stainlessmedia.com or stainlessstumblemedia.com, and. Uh, one of the things he suggested is, you know, every so often you get a pin that's just a little too long or just the right size that it does get jammed in the neck. He recommends taking those and, and throwing them away. Don't put them back in the batch, otherwise it's just going to get stuck in the neck later. And just on stainless steel media, I mentioned before um, how you don't get the coloration. So that 50 cal was stainless steel cleaned. And you can see, compared to the 223 here, the coloration isn't as obvious. So the whole uh, reason you get that color change is because the oxidization on the uh, outside of the case actually heats up and that's what causes the coloration change. So if it's got no oxide layer, you get a very clean piece of brass and it's a common misconception that, um, we get emails all the time, why does my case look anneal? Well, it's because of that. Because they've used stainless stumbling media. Yeah, so okay. don't be alarmed if your case comes out looking the same as it went in. Metallurgically, it has changed. Gotcha. This is a little off topic, but what, what kind of media, I mean, what's your preferred way of, of tumbling brass? Are you ultrasonic, stainless? Oh, we just use stainless. Beautiful. So do I. We haven't, to be honest, we haven't tried the various methods. Uh, we've, we've got a stainless steel tumbler purely to try uh, for, our, for our own research what happens. Because um, we noticed uh, initially in our research that stainless steel tumbling hardened the brass. But after doing further research, we actually cross-sectioned the case. It was just hardening the very skin of the brass, not the actual inside. So we did that for a research purpose. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, let's take a look at the amp mate, and then uh, we'll go from there. All right. So this here is the amp mate. As you can see, it's got a, a Dillon precision popper, just like you have on your reloading press. It's feeding the cases down. And inserting them into the amp, lose them, and injects them into a little case there. So for those of us that don't want to sit around and wait to put brass in, you turn this baby on and let me do the work for you. So these are, are what, about $300? The first batch was three hundred dollars but the uh, second batch will probably go up to 400 Oh wow, okay. Yeah, but the first batch had a few uh, minor bugs that we had to fix. We had to clean, we sent uh, customers who had the uh, first uh, batch. Uh, we sent them to fix this in the mail. So, but the next version of this uh, app mate will actually include all the fixes. Fantastic! I think it's pretty awesome. So Matt, where's the best place for uh, folks to get more information about the app? Basically go online to our website, you will see we've got a lot of videos uh, showcasing the annealer and the app mate. Uh, there's a massive uh, how-to setup video that we've put online to show you how to use it. Fantastic. And what's your website? Uh, Ampanealing.com. And you guys are based out of New Zealand? Correct. Fantastic. And these are readily available in shipping now? Uh, we've put a hold on shipping the app mate at the moment because we're working on uh, shipping the Mark II. We're a very small production team. And uh, once we get the Mark II uh, stocked again, we'll probably focus on the Mark II, uh, the uh, app mate again. So right now the app mate, we, we're just consolidating a few of the fixes and improvements to make it a, a better product. And we'll be able to get that probably around about April. Fantastic. All right, well, Matt, thanks, man. Really appreciate you uh, giving us the rundown. Um, I was talking to your dad. He mentioned that you guys have got a, a tremendous amount of articles on your website. Mm. And unlike a, one of the things I can't stand about the shooting industry, and, and it's kind of where our run your bowl, not your mouth slogan came from, is there's so much just hearsay. It's, you know, my uncle who knows a machinist who whatever uh, said that this is the way things should be, and then that becomes gospel. There's, there's a real lack of some real testing and, you know, using laboratory testing, 
and real numbers to, to prove out you know, kind of what things work and what don't. So I understand you guys have some amazing articles on your website. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we were actually recently on the way to SHOT Show at a well-known shooter's uh, facility, and he had a plaque up on his wall that said, one test is worth a thousand expert opinions. Yeah. So we've taken that to heart. This whole project has been uh, the culmination of years and years of testing, tens of thousands of testing, uh, independent laboratory results. Um, we've collaborated with obviously independent labs. Um, so it's all based on metamergence. So a lot of people talk about temperature and uh, coloration changes. Which Using Tempelac, which is what I've been using, is just the 750 Tempelac. Yeah. And when it goes clear, that's when it's annealed. So we aren't interested in what temperature it gets to. It's all about the resulting hardness. So you're taking a case from a high level of hardness to an acceptable level of hardness. And that's all we're trying to do. So if you go onto our website, you'll see there's a media tab. Down there, you've got articles. We've done, uh, we're up to part three now of annealing under the microscope. You've got in there um, basically the write up of all the tests we've done that verifies what we're doing with Aztec and how the machine works, and not only um, how the annealing process works, but how it affects accuracy. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a whole lot of uh, really interesting uh, photographs in there showing cross section of cases, different brands, uh, different calibers and uh, it just how a machine actually affects the brass. Interesting. Looks, that's awesome. I'm excited to go check that out. I was talking to your dad. Um, he was mentioning that uh, you know when you put it, even different lot numbers in, we, we talked a little about that in the video, um, you know, the, really the, there's there can be a pretty significant difference. And when you're using Aztec, you put the brass in there, you run it, it gives you that number. If you go and get a different lot, you put it in, it may give you a different number, and that means that the, you know, those brass, they're different. And yeah. They need to be annealed differently in order to really get that consistent result. If you use, um, so good reloading starts with good brass. Good annealing starts with good brass. If you're using a good manufacturer, you'll get good results. So what we, uh, what we say to guys is, with your brass, if you're unsure, take a handful of it, 10 cases, and weigh them. And if you're getting a lot of spread with your brass, you should probably uh, anneal them, analyze the one in the middle of the weight. So you can actually use the analysis function to, to determine the quality of the brass. Mm -hmm. Take a light case, take a heavy case, analyze both of them, see what the difference is in the program. If it's not that much, that's telling you the weight variation is actually in the head of the brass and not the neck and the shoulder. Okay. You can do things like that. What kind of ranges have you seen? Um, bad brass, you get a range of 10. So the number that the Aztec gives you is, is 10, yeah. it's a difference of 10. If there's a lot of weight variation in the neck and shoulder region, like our uh, annealing uh, under the microscope number three article tells you, tells you on this, you'll get a wide spread of programs. If it's in the head, you'll get a less spread. Interesting. In, uh, you want to be shooting brass with a very low weight distribution. Sure. So between one and one, two grains maximum. Okay. Yeah. And have you gone through and taken like one lot of one brand and, and literally run Aztec on the whole lot of 100, or like, you know, 100 brass at a time? You'll get the same code if it's a good manufacturer. It's a good manufacturer. Probably one code out, you know. If it's say 140 on the majority of them, maybe one of them might be 139, but that's a sign of good brass. So you're getting that consistency throughout the entire range. But we'd recommend just if it's a good quality manufacturer, Peterson, Lapua, Norma, any of those ones, you're going to get good results. Interesting, interesting. And I don't know that I even want to open the can of worms, but can you, can you explain a little more, what is that number? So it's, it's the hardness, how is it analyzing it? What is it doing? I mean, obviously that's your secret sauce, but give me the, the Reader's Digest version of what it's really checking. I mean, is it raising it to a certain temperature? What it's is doing, it, the, the machine is able to detect the exact nanosecond the case starts to melt. It uses that as a datum and it goes back from there. But it's not quite as simple as that. So uh, Alex has actually done tens of thousands of tests uh, back home in the lab. Hours and hours, days and days and days of work um, over years, mm -hmm. actually, well, not years, sorry, over the last year when we were developing it, uh, to come up with the formula. So it required testing all the cases, uh, different brands, you know, so 308, for example, how many different brands are there in 308? We had to determine, does this formula work for every 308, no matter what brand it is? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. you know, different lot numbers, well, there's the variation. So as long as you've got, um, as long as you tell the machine, I'm annealing a 308, it'll give you the correct code for that 308. What we don't recommend is mixing 
you know, lot numbers. The lots. No matter what manufacturer you've got, don't mix lot numbers. Uh, try and keep consistency uh, wherever you can with gotcha. what you're annealing. And, and the first version of the machine you came out with, <clears throat> Basically, you had a list of all the grass, and you gave a yeah. number, and then used that number. Now, with Aztec, it, it does all the analysis for So, you. the original machine required, uh, if it wasn't on our list, you had to mail us uh, samples of the grass. And that wasn't ideal. You, you know, some countries have uh, export restrictions on grass. So, we we wanted to come up with a way that uh, made the, the user independent, in a way. So, they can take it anywhere in the world and generate the perfect results at home. So that was the whole point of making Aztec. So uh, you still have access to the standard, we call it the standard mode, which is the original program suite mm -hmm. that came with the annealer. You can still go online and see all those different uh, brands and lot numbers and uh, neck turning options as well. But interestingly, on neck turning, you want to do all of that before you analyze your grass. Sure, so, obviously, yeah. yeah. Like we saying before. Okay. Um, but yeah, Aztec allows you just to go online. The list is way shorter. Because, for example, if you go into the standard mode, you'll see all the different three weights, all the different uh, two to threes, the brands. So all of that's compressed to just two to three, three away. Once mm -hmm. the pilot code, once you've got that pilot code, away you go. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'm super excited about this. You've got an incredible machine. I think a lot of people are going to be uh, have their eyes open by the video, and really appreciate you giving us some time and have a safe trip back to New Zealand, my friend. Cool. Thank you. So here we are at SHOT Show 2016. Got Todd McGee from Dead Air Armament. Hi, I'm Kelly McMillan here. We're gonna give it a shot right now. 